Hey guys, Nate Harris here with Stone River Outfitters. Thanks for joining me. In today's video, I'm going to share with you how to tie a simple little flats pattern that has, over the years, proven exceptionally deadly for fooling big bone fish, not only throughout the shallow waters of the Bahamian Out Islands, but along the dark muddy marls of the Florida Keys and across Mexico's Yucatan Peninsula too. Originated by saltwater guru Doug Brewer, and known quite affectionately by those of us who fish it is Brewer's Amber Shrimp, let's go ahead and get started. We'll begin with a high quality, standard length, stout wire, stainless steel saltwater hook sizes 2 through 8. What we've chosen today is Mustad Signature Series S71-34007 in the all around reliable size 4. And the thread we're using is Danville's 210 denier Flymaster Plus color yellow. We'll start the amber shrimp like we do all of our flies with a standard jam knot placed comfortably behind the hook eye and naturally once snug we'll go ahead and rid ourselves of the excess with a quick careful tug. Next, to give our fly a little weight, we'll go ahead and clip ourselves a single linked pair of appropriately sized gold bead chain eyes. And once cleanly snipped, we'll then go ahead and mount our bead chain snugly to the hook shank stop, positioned notably forward towards, but cautiously behind and not quite crowding our hook eye, using a series of successively laid, carefully controlled, well placed, and of course very tightly drawn figure eight thread wraps. The final few snug circular turns with our bobbin around the bead chain's base to help choke and tighten our figure eights, and a quick centering of the eyes if need be too. Then with our thread positioned behind our bead chain, we'll take a brief moment to ensure our eyes stay centered and secure by applying a quick liberal drop of Zappa Gap or a heavy dab of deep penetrating head cement drug neatly and evenly around our thread wraps both top and bottom. Next, to create the amber shrimp's tail, we'll grab in hand a nicely marked lemon wood duck feather or a handsomely dyed mallard flank substitute. And we'll prepare it quickly by neatly stripping from the feather's base the fluffy residue and excess, preserving only the feather's sparse, flush, even tipped end. Then with tips facing rearward, we'll take a moment to measure our tail against the hook, ensuring for proportion's sake that it roughly equals the length of our shank. Once satisfied, we'll transfer the wood duck to our offhand, shift it to the fly's rear, and we'll begin binding our tail neatly along the hook shank's top using smooth, evenly spaced turns, continuing rearward until we've reached our stop located about halfway between the hook's barb and the hook's sharpened point. Next, to create this pattern's signature body, we'll grab in hand our trusty spool of vinyl rib, what we're using today is size nymph, color of course amber, and after snipping ourselves a comfortable 4-5 to five inch length, we'll go ahead and mount the V-rib firmly at the fly's rear with a half round with the D-shaped side facing down against the hook shank and the rib's flat side facing out. Once snug, we'll simply bind our V-rib forward along the hook shank's top using nice evenly spaced thread wraps, continuing until we've at long last reached our bead chain eyes. Once there, we'll go ahead and take a moment to quickly lift then trim the excess feather stem away neatly at its base. A quick advancement of our bobbin to a position where our thread rests in front of our bead chain eyes. And we'll next begin wrapping forward under notably heavy tension and most importantly with the half round or the D-shaped side now facing out our amber colored V-rib body. Moving smoothly forward along the hook shank's entirety using carefully placed, closely laid, tight and abutting turns, we'll continue forward with our V-rib all the way to then quickly up and over our gold bead chain eyes, where we'll then go ahead and tie off our V-rib firmly against the hook shank using a few well-placed snug drawn thread wraps. Naturally once secured, we'll go ahead and lift then trim the excess V-rib away neatly at its base with a close quick snip from our scissors. Next, in preparation for winging, we'll take a moment to invert our fly orienting it as it will actually fish with the bead chain now on bottom and the hook point riding up. Then to create our amber shrimp's deadly dark colored wing, we'll grab in hand a nice white bucktail and snip from its natural brown backside center a sparse semi-long bunch of fine tipped hairs. A quick combing or finger preening to help rid the bunch of its fuzzy underfur base and a quick hand stacking too perhaps to help even and align the tapered tips. Then with tips facing rearward, we'll go ahead and take a moment to measure our hairs 
against the hook shank, ensuring for proportion's sake that our wing's end lines up approximately flush with the tail's trailing edge. Once satisfied, we'll transfer the measured pinch to our offhand and neatly trim away the excess forward hair ends with a quick tidy snip of our scissors. And of course, for durability's sake, we'll remember before proceeding to apply a small daub of head cement to the fresh trimmed butt ends. Once saturated, we'll then go ahead and mount our wing firmly in place just forward of our bead chain eyes and directly on top of the hook shank using a few carefully controlled snug drawn thread wraps. A quick cursory parting of the wing with our bodkin if necessary, and a bit of forceful pinching too, perhaps, to help settle and gently spread our hairs. Then once happy with our wing's appearance, we'll go ahead and build ourselves a nice, neat, tightly wound, smooth laid, level sloping head of yellow thread. Once built, we'll go ahead and take a moment to finish our fly by installing a well-placed, carefully controlled whip knot. A brief snug pull with our bobbin, of course, to ensure our whip knot holds. And once taut, we'll then go ahead and trim away the excess thread neatly with a quick snip from our scissors. Last, we'll take a moment to end this fly, like we do most of our saltwater patterns, by applying a liberal bead of clear epoxy or a heavy drop of high quality thick build head cement drug neatly and evenly with care around both the top, sides, and bottom of our yellow thread wraps and lightly around the base of our bead chain eyes too. Well friends, there we have it. Doug Brewer's Deadly Amber Shrimp Tide Start to Finish. This simple, easy to tie, dark toned, shallow water flats pattern has proven almost irresistible, not only to big bone fish throughout the Caribbean and beyond, but surprisingly effective for fooling the occasional picky permit too. A wise and worthwhile addition to your flats fly box indeed. If you're headed south, for a little fun in the tropical sun anytime soon, I strongly advise winding up a handful of Brewer's trusty amber shrimp before leaving. Hey gang, thanks again for tuning in today. Do please remember to visit us on the web for all your fly fishing and fly tying needs, and as always, snug wraps and tight lines to all.